Today, I am interviewing Barbara Hartsfield. She has the largest collection of miniature chairs. Hi, welcome to Curious Collections with Marla Mogul. Today, I am interviewing Barbara Hartsfield. She has the largest collection of miniature chairs. And it may not be what you're thinking about because I think when you hear miniature chairs, you think about dollhouse furniture. Well, that's not at all what Barbara collects. Her collection is much more interesting than that. So I'm gonna let Barbara tell you some more. Barbara, welcome to Curious Collections. We're very happy to have you here today. You have a very interesting backstory of how you started collecting chairs. Can you tell us your story, please? Okay, I'm a psychiatric nurse at Braden Hospital in Atlanta. And back in 1989, I decided to write an article on pregnant mental health patients and how we treat them in a community mental health center. So I decided to buy one chair to set the mood to write this article. So when I went to find this chair, I found all these unique chairs. The article was published in 1990. And I just started collecting those unusual chairs as a hobby on the weekend. I had no idea it was gonna grow into this big collection that ended up with being a world record of 3,000 chairs in 2008. And I opened a miniature to a three room museum in Stone Mountain, Georgia in 2009. So it has taken a journey of its own. That is so fascinating. And I love what you do for a living and how you've tied this all into it is just beautiful. You started your collection 30 years ago and you were awarded the Guinness World Record in 2008 for having a collection of 3000 chairs. Have you added to your collection since then? And have you been keeping track of how many more you have? I still shop for chairs, not as often. Before it was a journey, I would actually go looking for chairs every weekend, but not now. I don't keep the record anymore. I just take pictures. So I'm keeping that record, but if I want to count, I can go back and count the pictures. Okay, but you have been keeping track. Yeah. What was the very first chair? Do you have the chair there? I'm sure you have it at the museum. Uh, what was it? It was just a rocking chair. <laughs> oh, okay. Baby. But it, was baby. it a miniature? Was it a miniature chair? It was a little larger because I had to put a baby in, in the chair to right. get into mood to get into the mood to write the article. Awesome. I love that. The inspiration that you use. So the chairs have really provided more than just a collection. It was really an inspiration for you. So I love that. So because they're miniature, what is the smallest chair that you have? The smallest chair I have was discovered by a French reporter, and it's a thimble that has a director's chair on top of it. What's your most valuable chair? I think the most valuable chairs are the ink wells and the chairs inside bottles. Well, you've actually opened a museum to house all the chairs. Where did you have the chairs before you opened the museum? They were in a commercial storage, but for the Guinness World Record. I had to bring all of them out of storage for my two witnesses to see. So I had 27 books of pictures that I took over these 30 years. So I organized my house with these uh, 27 books. Like in the kitchen, there was teapots, cookie jars, salt and pepper shakers. Uh, so it was easy uh, for them to see, but they couldn't just look at pictures. They actually had to see the chairs. They took my, uh, 27 books as a guide. So the Guinness people accepted that. Uh, I don't know if many people know how difficult it is to get a Guinness World Record. And like you said, you had all those pictures. That was before the day of digital photography, right? When you can organize them right. into digital albums. So you literally had a catalog. So I imagine there aren't a lot of other collectors out there. Do you know of any others? Well, I've been surprised how I've been uh, contacted by other collectors. One person read about me in the newspaper. Her name is Karen Wood. And she actually created a 12-inch toothpick chair for me. And another person who is, he's a folk artist. So you know how you have chairs and ships inside bottles? So I uh, yes. commissioned him to create salt and pepper shakers with chairs inside. So that was uh, Keith Brown. 
it's just exciting to talk with other people who have a, their own passion. It is. And that's why I love doing this because there's something unique to collectors and the things that they choose to collect. And I just find it so fascinating and to hear people's backstories and how it started. And I think a lot of people want to leave a legacy and really something that people know them by. And a collection is definitely one way to do that. Right. Interesting that you opened the museum. And that's an interesting story also. So you opened that in 2009. So that's right after you got the world record. Right. And it's in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Tell me some more about the museum. Well, the museum has also been an exciting journey for me also. In addition to the world record, the museum is historic. It's in the historic district of Stone Mountain Village. And the building was built, the uh, renovated building was constructed in 1850. And I'm the fourth person who has owned this building. So I've gone to the courthouse and gotten the first deed that was owned by the railroad in 1850. And it was a personal, um, I think the railroad had it as a rooming house. And then after that, it was a private rental property. And I bought it from a gift shop, Eagle Nest Gift Shop. So I'm the fourth owner in a building that was built in 1850. So you get a, a historic building, a historic collection. And the village is listed in the National Registry of Places to Visit. So you have a triple treat. I think you mentioned that there's a very interesting book that they actually have, what is it, like the 10 top attractions when you're in Georgia? It's Jonathan McDonald. He recently wrote a book on uh, the weird, the unusual. It's like 99 attractions in Atlanta. So his book was almost ready to go to uh, for publication, and he found out I had the chair museum, and he came over. And even though the book was about to go to the publisher, I got in the book. <laughs> and he had an article in the newspaper about a month ago, and they asked him to select three of his most favorite um, attractions in the book, and I was one of the three. Wonderful. And the museum is open to the public. And I imagine because of the pandemic, you had to close for a while. Are you still closed or have you reopened? Reopened May 24th for my 12th anniversary. I have been closed for a year, for the whole year. The council, city council of Stone Mountain, they gave out generous uh, grants to merchants. And it was right in time for me to open up. And I thank the uh, city council for the Stone Mountain Village. You're quite the woman, Barbara. It is. Wow. And how, well, how many visitors do you get to the museum every year? I think I get more of those than just traffic, just um, driving back. It's a business street where people are trying to get to the expressway. But I've just been really surprised with the international. Like this past weekend, I had a couple come in from Maryland. I just like enjoyed people who enjoy the collection. Well, I think that is the pleasure of doing this and have being in the Guinness World Records is that you want to share it. Yeah. And you get, you get so much joy out of it. I do. want to share it with everybody else. So I'm sure that's a lot of the joy that comes back to you from that. The museum is in three different rooms. And so you don't just have the chairs all over the place. They're definitely very well organized. Right. Can you explain the different rooms and how you've organized them? Okay, each room has major holidays and special exhibits. Like in room one, we have Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Halloween. We also have a red, I call it the patriotic exhibit. That's red, white, and blue flag chairs. I have an exhibit for um, African, like I have President Oak and Dr. King. They're in the first, because that's Dr. King is the first holiday for the year. So that's my first case. And in room number two, that's the largest room. I have a Western exhibit. That's where I really highlight a horseshoe chairs. I also have a case with over 100 different salt and pepper shakers. I have a case with water globes. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> One wall, I call it my jungle party, and that's where I highlight twig chairs. So I have animals sitting in chairs having a party in the jungle. Case the two cases include for household items, you know, like uh, teapots, 
that you can actually use uh, for making tea. I even have one special case with uh, commodes. Now, to me, that's the best seat in the house. Now, that's not part of the Guinness World Record, but people get fascinated with the commode uh, display. You'd be surprised. Uh, I have a commode candles, commode cigarette lighters. Cigarette. I mean, it's it's unreal. And oh. it's in room number three, that's Christmas. I have a Christmas tree with over 100 chair ornaments. I have Easter. I have Thanksgiving. Inkwells. I love inkwells. So that gives you an idea. But it's organized now. It's organized. Wonderful. I think, too, that's another trait of collectors is that in addition to collecting these things, we like organizing them. And I've talked to some collectors that consider their display more than just their collection, but an actual work of art. Yeah. And the fact that you've put it into a museum, I mean, that says something right there. And if you're going to have people visiting, absolutely, you want them, you want it to be organized so it makes sense to them as they're going along. So that's beautiful. And then rule number one, I have this big fireplace that kind of dates the building. I like, oh yeah, in the bathroom, I have a clawfoot tub. You smile. <laughs> I made it into a chair garden with cover. The top has a glass cover, but inside, It's artificial grass and chairs that have flowers on. So I even included the bathroom as part of the museum. So that's an exhibit also. You smile and it's it's, it's overwhelming. (laughs) But it's it's, taking it to the next level. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's a 30-year journey. You know, each each stage just falls in place. It wasn't like it all happened at one time. And I think the main thing that happened is I enjoyed it. It wasn't like I did just pressure to make money and all that. It was to have fun doing it. Well, that's, I think, too, what collecting is about. It's your passion. And i that's one of the reasons I'm doing this, too, is to let people know that there are ways to really embrace your passion and turn it into more than just a hobby. And it's something that brings you joy. And I especially love your tie-in with mental health and that whole point about just for whatever, however long it is. And I think it stays with you too after you leave the museum. It's just not just in that moment. So something just to get away from your everyday life and just do something that's totally fun. And I know you're not done. I mean, you're not stopping. Tell me what keeps you going. See, I've had uh, fun taking pictures, writing articles, the book. You know, it just experiences I never had. So it's, it's all about learning. And I took all those pictures myself in that uh, ABC book. So it's it's been fun. Fun is the key. And I, I've been blessed to have people to keep me motivated. You know, I, my family, my friends, my co-workers, my church member, everybody embraced the passion. So they would be out looking for chairs from even the merchants. When I would go to an antique monthly antique show, they were trying to find chairs that I didn't have. These are merchants that would be coming from all over the Southeast. So it's just been a journey. I couldn't oh. stop. They wouldn't let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, your energy is contagious <laughs> and everybody wants to help you. And you're talking about your book. You took pictures um, for your book, which is called My ABC Chair Book. And this is just so fascinating because it's really an educational tool for young children. You have every letter of the alphabet, and then you have a chair to go along with them. For example, we've got gingerbread, glass. Uh, These are just beautiful. Hearts, horseshoes. I mean, this is just wonderful to see a horseshoe chair. You've actually got two of them. And then I have a case with horseshoes. I have a case with horseshoes in it. <laughs> oh, my. So this one is horseshoe. not just about miniature chairs. Yeah, one horseshoe has a barometer on it, you know. But I, I tried to have two chairs for each alphabet. Some alphabets have more designs than others. Very I, incredible. Some very incredible. So you're writing some more books. We had talked about also considering uh, field trips 
for kids. Since you're doing the books for children, yeah. I'm sure they'd love to come and actually see the chairs. Of course, the people that are local, but you know, even from around the area to come in for field trips. Have you uh, done anything with that or are you planning anything for that? Planning on it. So with just being here two days, that's, I have to work that out. But yeah, so it would be exciting to be able to actually see the pictures I mean, see the chair that are in the book, actually see them in, in the museum. I think so. And what about if you've done like a guidebook or anything like that for the museum when people are walking around, like a little blurb on each one? People are saying I need a guide because I, I talk so much. <laughs> so, I mean, if I'm doing one tour and then I have to start another, sometimes I put the two, two groups together. I just mm -hmm. feel they might miss something if they just walk through. I let them go back, but they love the tools. I have little right. signs out for people, but they ignore the signs. That's a lot of work and you're on your feet. Yeah. But I actually like what you said about not labeling them, not having the book, because as you said before, it's about pure fun. Yeah. So you don't need to get mired in the details. Just enjoy it. Be in the moment. And if you're there describing things even better. I think that's really the best approach. So it's wonderful. so different. I think that's what surprised people. They never thought of a chair teapot or a chair lamp or a chair picture frame. So it's they just get fascinated with it. So so Barbara, I have your a link to your book uh, in the description below. And also I'm gonna put some information on how people can reach you at the museum, how they can get tickets. And there are no tickets. They don't need a ticket. All right, no tickets. You just show up. So when you're in Atlanta, please visit the museum and also please get her book and keep your eye out for the other upcoming books. I can't wait to see those too. This has been so delightful getting to know you and learning more about your collection. Is there anything else? I just like to thank all of the people who have supported me over the years. My sister, Badia, me and my mom, Velma, and just all of the people who just kept me going. My sister's a business person, so she's my mentor. So, Barbara, it's been an absolute pleasure. I love what you're doing, and I am going to come visit you. I'm going to come up to Atlanta, and I want to see that museum, and I want to meet you and okay. see your collection. I'm looking okay. forward to seeing you, and okay. thank you thank so much for so having me. You're welcome. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Thank you for being here. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me and Barbara Hartsfield, the Guinness World Record holder for having the most miniature chairs in a private collection. If you like what you saw here today, you want to see some more interesting collections, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And remember, keep smiling.